Hello, good morning. I'm here today with Marik from Near Protocol. Um, Marik, would you like to introduce ourselves to our viewers? Sure. Hi. Um, so I'm Marik Flamand. I'm the CEO of the Near Foundation, uh, which, as you've mentioned, looks after the Near Protocol. Fantastic. Great. So, I mean, we're here today in La Bourse, which is uh, formerly the French Stock Exchange, and you yourself come from a, a TradFi background. Could you perhaps talk to us a little bit today about um, the trend that you're seeing in more and more um, traditional finance TradFi people coming over into the cryptocurrency sector? I think, you know, I think it's not just TradFi, actually. It's uh, an entire Web2 movement that is actually coming to Web3. And truth be told, we need so much talent, right? Because um, in crypto and blockchain, what you've seen so far is actually a lot of people who are very, very core developers building products and so on and so forth. But actually for products to be successful, you need a whole array of people. You need lawyers, you need operations, you need go to market, you need marketing and so on and so forth. And you need actually, especially if you want to work in DeFi or sectors like that, you actually, it's very helpful to have TradFi experience, right? Okay. So I'm seeing a lot of talent come from, let's say, more traditional world into Web3. That's okay. very welcome and we need more. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, no, I bet. And so Nia has had an incredibly busy 2021, 2022. Would you be able to perhaps talk talk us through your priorities for this year and perhaps some accomplishments over the past, what, four or five months of 2022? Yeah, so um, our long-term goal is to think through how can we have billions of users actually being on the NEAR protocol, whether they know it or they don't, right? Because ultimately, the NEAR protocol is an underlying technology, and as a user, you shouldn't have to worry what technology you're on. Mm. To do that, especially from a foundation perspective, we have three large objectives. Number one is how can we help raise awareness? Mm -hmm not just of near but also just of the space in general web3 open web what does it mean back to talent right how can okay. we actually help attract more talent within raising awareness we're also extremely focused on how can we help have real use cases that actually are going to enable that large on ramp of of people who come from web2 okay. so for example yesterday we announced a partnership with sweatcoin which is an app you walk you actually get sweat points and now they are choosing near to be their protocol for moving that to crypto so things like that are mm -hmm. part of what the foundation does. Uh, the second mandate and our objective for this year is actually how can we support builders on NIR? Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a very large grant program, so we can give small grants, larger grants, grants that are focused, for example, for DeFi or certain regions. So that's how we can help support builders. And the last part is actually uh, governance and regulation, right? We are okay. all in a space that moves very quickly. How, as a foundation, can we help spearhead that uh, for, for the ecosystem? Okay, you said something very interesting there allowing users to use near whether they know it or they don't but what do you mean by that could you perhaps give us some examples of where that's happened to date yeah well i mean today you know when you send an email do you know that it's on an http or smtp you don't know that <laughs> right and so i think uh, what we observe most of the time is that especially in the crypto space we're still very much in the technicalities of it right like okay. it's this building block and that and so on. but it's not that user friendly or the ux is not fully seamless mm -hmm. and what we believe in is actually the technology needs to solve real end user problems okay. and so how can we build some of those cases where ultimately it's just great tech that is enabling you some, to do something that otherwise you couldn't do. Sure, sure. And I mean, as you mentioned, that example of an email, um, how far out are we from when we will suddenly realize, okay, I'm using crypto without using it, I'm using near without using it? I think we're actually getting closer and closer, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, examples such as Sweatcoin are really interesting because okay. the app today perfectly works in a Web2 world without any crypto in it at all, right? Okay. So, the idea is like, okay, now if you power that with crypto, mm -hmm. it shouldn't change fundamentally what's happening, but actually it's doing things that can be more seamless and can empower more use cases. Okay. Um, similarly, uh, we're starting to see and look at DAOs. I think DAOs are fascinating, but the ultimate holy grail of DAO is that you can participate and be in an ecosystem system and take decisions without having to worry too much about the intricacies of the technology that you're leveraging. Okay, got it, got it. And um, so near is splits between uh, California and Switzerland, as in, you know, it first was born, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, by the way. Um, and we're seeing more and more uh, cryptocurrency uh, projects and uh, Web3 developments take place in Switzerland, but obviously with this entry point into the EU. However, the EU has recently made it quite difficult with the new KYC regulations. Um, how would you describe uh, or how do you evaluate the current operating environment within Europe at the moment? Yeah, so a couple of things there. So we're extremely decentralized actually as a team. So yes, sure. you're right. Uh, the protocol and the founding team started from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Today we are actually uh, 
uh, from all over the US, from all over Europe. We have quite a large operation uh, in Portugal because a lot of the teams who are actually based in Ukraine have now relocated. Okay. Um, we have teams also in Asia. We have teams, basically we're extremely, we're decentralized sure. <laughs> as most people are in the space. I think the point you mentioned, um, it's really interesting to actually look at the regulatory landscape and the okay. movements that are happening there because uh, you know a couple of months ago I'm not sure we would have been so positive about the take that was taken by the US towards the towards the the landscape of crypto and actually it's starting to be more positive and you look at uh, Europe and I think every week we are seeing new things that are coming out almost of nowhere um, mm. and that actually could be threatening for the entire ecosystem and I think that's something to watch out for because the talent in this industry is extremely fluid okay. and so the talent will go where things are enabled and where things are possible um, mm. and I think also from a European perspective and we're trying to, to help also spearhead that but we need to be more uh, you know, coordinated in having a voice for the industry yep. and ultimately coming together with regulators because the intention of regulation are absolutely the right one, protects yeah. consumers and product businesses and the intention of the space are the same one, right? So there is a, there is a middle ground there is a, mm. a you know, two-side education that can happen there. Very good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you mentioned obviously regulation there. Uh, what would you say are other sort of hurdles or things that you have to navigate on, on a daily basis within, within the industry? Well, I think it, within the industry, um, you know, if you look at where you employ people, employment law uh, can be also sometimes, uh, you know, it varies a lot across, for example, across Europe, across different different places. Uh, I think that's definitely one. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, regulation. I think adoption from a market perspective, it's really interesting okay. to think that uh, all of us are, are trying to bring, you know, models that are very global, and yet it's very local. Like yeah. you come here to Paris, you can meet the Paris community. Mm -hmm. It's actually quite a tight knit very strong community but you go to another place it's going to be a different community mm -hmm. so I'm actually fascinated by that by the need to have very local footprint to actually be a very global player yeah yeah no absolutely I mean looking forward to the your vision for the sector let's say and um, what are you most excited about what, what is it that really inspires you in the space um, I'm personally extremely inspired by DAOs, right? I've been okay. uh, watching the trend over the last few years and bef even before when I was in, in TradFi of like, our ways of working are fundamentally changing. Mm -hmm. The creator economy, the passion economy, the way we live our lives is just completely shifting. And mm -hmm. the nine to five being in one location, that's just something that's not here to stay. If you, if you look even like how we're motivated to do things today, how uh, the next generation want to work, where they want to work from, and on and so forth. So DAO, I think, are so powerful to reinvent how we participate into projects that matter to us. Uh, and I think we're just at the beginning of that. But uh, that's definitely the area I'm, I'm looking at and very excited about. Okay. Any interesting examples or use cases for DAOs that you'd like to share today? Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks for asking. Um, so we've recently announced actually that we are working with CellGP, which is a okay. sailing competition that's been spearheaded by uh, Larry Ellison. And uh, we are uh, Basically, the, the league is enabling a DAO to buy a team, which okay. is the first in sports history of like having a professional team that's going to be able to be acted by, by a DAO. So mm -hmm. I think that's really interesting. Um, another example, because it's also quite close to, to our heart, is uh, we've launched uh, Unchained Fund, which is a DAO for raising fund for Ukraine, okay. uh, which has been extremely successful. I mean, it's been beautiful so to see like the amount of capital that flew in that super fast and that was therefore enabled to be unlocked very fast for a local help yeah yeah absolutely and, and speaking of capital you know we're here in a former institutional investment style building um, would you say that inve institutional investment or interest at least is here and is it here to stay Oh, hundred percent! It's here. Okay. Um, we are we are seeing a very strong appetite from institutional investors to understand the space, to understand where they can participate. Yep. And here again, regulation is going to play a very big role, right? Because mm. a lot of companies within the space can be actually token based, and okay. I think be, being able to actually invest in something that's token based is not given in every market. So, for example, if you take the example because we're here in France, um, it's actually quite difficult for funds to be able to accept that. Other markets. Mm make that more easy. So I think institutional funds are trying to find what are the models where they can see something they recognize, which right. might be more equity based, um, and how they can actually start participating. Institutional, so we're seeing a lot of um, Web2 companies wanting to get into Web3, right? Yeah. 
Um, and again, Sweatcoin is a great example of that, but like many, many others are thinking through, oh my God, what does this mean? I have a hotel business. What does this mean for me, right? Mm. Um, so all those questions are starting to arise. Fantastic. I feel like I could ask you any question related to the industry. You definitely know your stuff. Is there anything else you'd like to share today or anything that's, you know, particularly top of mind, you know, while you're in Paris? Well, no, but I think thanks for thanks for having me. I think it's great. I think it's um, maybe the last point would be that that the local uh, footprint that we can see here is actually really interesting. And I'm maybe closing with what you said. We are in a very traditional in very traditional building, but yeah. you can sense that innovation is actually pushing the boundaries of what that traditional building will be going forward. For sure, it does feel like we're at this sort of inflection point. You Definitely. know. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Marie. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. And uh, yeah, we look forward to speaking with you again soon.